Please rise. Davis County Justice Court is now in session. The Honorable Jason Kachowski presiding. Thank you, Deputy. I appreciate that. You can be seated. Apparently he forgot that part. Hi, Mr. Cole. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Hi, Ms. Allen. Do you want to come up to the council table there? That'll be fine. Mr. Cole, before the trial started, or starts, Ms. Allen filed, or had someone file on her behalf, a request for a continuance. Did you get a copy of that? I did not. Do you want to look at it? No, Judge, I'll object to any continuance. All right. Ms. Allen, Mr. Cole's objecting to a continuance in this case. Do you want to tell me why you think you need a continuance in this case? If you're going to address the court, you need to come up where the microphones can pick you up. I am fine right here. I'm plenty loud enough. Have you received my entry of appearance specially? I did. The bailiffs brought me a copy of it. I, Diane Killian Allen, do hereby enter my appearance specially in the above matter for disposition to equity of the parties. Respectfully submitted this day, respecting 28 U.S. Code 1746, Section 1. Thanks. Ms. Allen, we're going to conduct a bench trial. Here's how we're going to proceed. We're going to have opening statements. You don't have to give one if you choose not to. Opening statements are not evidence, and they're not testimony. They're simply a statement that a party gives me to tell me where the case is going. Ms. Allen, if he's going to distract you in this matter, it's not going to be helpful for you because you won't know what we're doing. After parties give me their opening statements, I'll let Mr. Cole move forward. He's the prosecutor, and the city bears the burden of proving these crimes beyond a reasonable doubt. He'll introduce overruled. He'll introduce testimony through witnesses and perhaps physical exhibits. You'll have a chance to cross-examine any witnesses he uses and view any exhibits that he uses before they become part of the record. When he's finished, he will rest. When he rests, it'll be your turn to put on a defense if you choose. At that time, you can put on your opening statement and call any witnesses and produce any evidence you'd like. After you're done, Mr. Cole may have rebuttal information he wants to give me. If he does, I'll accept that as far as it's material and relevant. And once I have all the evidence in this case, I'll decide whether I need to take it under advisement. I'm sorry. After I have all the evidence, we'll have closing arguments. Closing arguments are much like opening statements in that they're not evidence and they're not testimony. They're just a wrap-up telling you where the case has taken me. I object, Your Honor, to any proceeding in this matter. Overruled. I do hereby enter my appearance specially in the above matter for disposition to the equity of the parties. Overruled. Respectfully submitted this day respecting 28 U.S. Code 1746, Section 1. I heard you the first time, and you're overruled. Once I have all of the arguments in this case, then I'm going to decide if I make a ruling today or I take it under advisement. If I make a ruling today, I'll notify the parties. If I take it under advisement, I'll let you know. Mr. Cole, do you want to make an opening statement in this case? No, Your Honor. Ms. Allen, do you want to make an opening statement in this case? I, Diane Killian Allen, do hereby enter my appearance specially in the above matter for disposition to the equity of the parties. Respectfully submitted this day respecting 28 U.S. Code 1746, Section 1. I understand. Thank you. Mr. Cole, you can call your first witness. Thank you, Judge. I do have one housekeeping matter. Go ahead. I would ask the court to ask the defendant if she intends to assert a defense under 53-3217. So a person who is charged with not carrying a license with them, which is what she's charged with in Count 1, has an absolute defense to that if she can produce in court a driver license that was valid on the day of the ticket. I'd like to give her an opportunity to assert that defense. Ms. Allen, Mr. Cole is making reference to Utah Code 53-3217, Subpart 2. 
subpart B2. It's a defense to a charge of not having a valid license if you can produce in court a driver's license that had been issued to you that was valid at the time that you were arrested or cited. So Mr. Cole's offering you the chance to exercise an absolute defense to the one charge concerning your driver's license. Do you want to take advantage of that and have that charge dismissed? I object, Your Honor. What Mr. Cole is saying is hearsay. Overruled. And I do hereby enter my appearance specially in the above matter for disposition to the equity of all the parties. Overruled. Mr. Cole apparently overruled. I'm not going to listen to you make an objection three times. Mr. Cole apparently she doesn't want to take advantage of the defense in this case. Your Honor, I am not participating in the trial. I have challenged subject matter jurisdiction. It has not been proven. And I do hereby enter my appearance specially in the above matter for disposition to the equity of the parties. I've heard you four times now, Ms. Allen. You can keep saying that. I've got a copy of what you submitted. I've heard you four times. I'm happy to note your objection for the record. Absolutely not. I do not consent to any of this. We are not holding court in this matter. You have a warrant for your arrest. What warrant? What evidence? Provide probable cause. You are violating our rights, both of us. This is absolutely unacceptable. Let him go. Right now. Let him go. Please don't. You let him go. Absolutely not. You let him go. He's done nothing wrong. He's got a warrant. Take him to the police station. 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 Take him to
No, they have taken him in the back room where I cannot see him any longer. Are you guys on the phone with someone from the courts right now? They have been placing their hands on me, forcing me to do things I don't want to do. And they placed cuffs on my son for something he was sitting peacefully in the courtroom. I need help right now. He's done nothing wrong. I need help sent right now. Yeah, that's me in the background. It's not an emergency. It is an emergency. Do not disconnect that call. It is an emergency. I've been assaulted and my son has been assaulted with no cause. Ms. Allen, please hang up your phone. I will not. You're committing... You all here have been participating in crimes against both of us without cause. Have you guys disconnected? Do not hang up this call. I need help sent right now. These people are violating my rights. They're violating my son's rights. I need help. Ms. Allen, I'm going to ask you to please hang up your cell phone. I'm listening to you. I'd like to stay on the phone with you until they arrive. Thank you. I'm going to give you a warning right now. Hang up and follow the judge's directions or I'm going to take you into custody. I will leave, but I am not going to participate in these... Turn the phone off right here. No, I'm staying on the phone with the officers. This is myself who responded to that call. No, someone else needs to be responding besides you because you are the one violating my rights. Under Title 18, Section 912, 913. Then you need to let me pass. This is totally improper. Every one of you. No, sir. You don't get to tell me what to do. Thank you. You violated my rights. You violated his rights, and this is a huge problem. Ms. Allen. I need to be able to press charges and file a report. Ms. Allen, will you please hang up your phone so we can proceed with your trial? We can't proceed. There is no trial. We can proceed. No, we cannot. Have you guys hung up? Yes, please do. If they hang up, it will be a violation of their duties as well. You are sworn officers of the law. You've sworn an oath to the Constitution. You've sworn oaths of office. Every one of you are violating my rights. You're violating my son's rights, and I need... You're not going to stop me from going again. That's causing a public safety issue for something that's not an emergency. It is an emergency because you are assaulting me right now. You are assaulting me, and it is a public safety issue because you are assaulting me. They are short-staffed in there, and you... It has nothing to do with them. Let me go. Okay. Now I'm going to let go. Take your hand off of me. You need to sit down and listen to the judge. I will be leaving, and you will not stop me. You want me to stop her? If she wants to leave, she can leave. Make sure she has her phone, Deputy King. Mr. Cole, she has been here. I advised her when she was here earlier about a trial in absentia. She's clearly not being held against her will at the present time, and she was able to be here in court. Would you like to proceed in her absence? Yes, Judge. She left voluntarily and indicated multiple times that this was not a trial she wanted to participate in, so I'd ask to proceed and call my first witness. Then I'll let you go ahead, and if you want to make an opening statement, you're welcome to do that. Otherwise, you can call your first witness. The city calls Officer Dane Hanson to the stand. Officer, will you please come forward, face the clerk, and let her put you under oath? Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. You'll have a seat. Officer, that chair there has arms that are adjustable, so if it's not wide enough for your utility belt, spread them out a little bit and make yourself comfortable, okay? Thank you, Judge. And when he's ready, Mr. Cole, you can begin. Thank you, Your Honor. You are Officer Dane Hanson? I am. Are you a certified police officer in the state of Utah? I am. Where do you work? Farmington Police Department. How long have you worked there? Just over three years. What's your current assignment? I'm a patrol officer. Were you on duty on April 7th of this year? I was. And did you stop 
a car for a registration problem? I did. Who was driving that car? Uh, Diane Killian. Also known as Diane Killian Allen? Yes, sir. That's the person who was in court today before she decided to leave? Yes, sir. Okay. Why did you stop her car? Uh, the registration on the vehicle showed expired. Where was the location of the stop? I stopped the vehicle on northbound Furnage Road, um, just north of Park Lane. A public roadway? Yes, sir. And how did you determine this? Mr. Cole, Mr. Cole I, I apologize to interrupt you, but did you say the frontage road before Park Lane? The frontage road just north of Park Lane. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Cole. That's still within Farmington City limits, yeah? Yes, sir. It is between Park Lane and Shepherd Lane. How did you determine that the registration of the car was expired? I visually observed that the license plate decal showed it was expired from September of last year. I verified that with uh, through Spillman, which is um, in relation to the DMV documents. So Spillman has real-time access to DMV records? It does. And it tells you the DMV status of any particular vehicle? Yes. Were you satisfied that the registration was expired? Yes. Did you approach the car? Did yes. you approach the car? I did. <coughs> Who was driving? Uh, Diane Allen. Was there anyone else in the car? There was not. Which side did you approach from? The passenger side. Did you have body cam on at the time? I did. Did you also have dash cam? Yes. Have those been preserved? Yes. When you approached her, what did you say to her at the first? I advised her that I was Officer Hanson with the Farmington Police Department and that I had stopped her for expired registration. Um, how did she react to your arrival at the car? Um, when I arrived at the passenger side window, the window was cracked um, and she was recording me with her cell phone. Did you ask her for a license and insurance information? I did. Did she provide it? She did not. Did you ask her for registration information? I did. Did she provide it? She did not. What did she provide you? She provided um, a United States passport and a copy of the Constitution. Okay. What did she say about her driver license? Uh, she said she was not operating under a driver's license. What did she say about the registration on her car? That she did not provide registration for a vehicle. What did you do at that point? Uh, at that point, I again advised her why I had made the traffic stop and I returned to my patrol vehicle where um, I issued a citation for driving without a license in her possession and for expired registration. So for the no license in possession charge, did you specifically ask her for her license? I did. Did she provide one? She did not. On the registration charge, did you ask her for registration? I did. Did she provide it? She did not. Did you check the tag to make sure there was not a current tag on the license plate? I did. Was there a current tag? There was not. Did you confirm with Spillman and DMV records that the car was not registered I did. on that day? When you returned to give her the ticket, what happened? When I returned to give her the ticket, I attempted to explain the citation to her in relation to contacting the courts and what she had been charged with. Um, she would not accept the citation. I placed it through the gap in her window and walked away. Thank you. No further questions. All right. Officer Hanson, thank you for being here. You can step in. Thank you. Mr. Cole, you can call your next witness. The city rests, Your Honor. Mr. Cole, would you like to make any closing argument? No, Your Honor. I'll need to answer any questions the court might have. I don't think I have any questions, but let me just take a look at a couple of things. There's been an information that was filed in this case. Actually, I think it was captioned, amended the information. But it was filed on August 26th. And Mr. Cole, I think there's a certification that a copy of the information was given to Ms. Allen. Is that right? So for the record, we mailed a copy of the information to her address. The court directed her, as I understand. I was not here, but I was 
told by another prosecutor that the court directed her to appear at our offices by 5 o'clock on that Friday to pick up a copy of the information. She did not do that. In fact, that package is still at our front desk. Um, we mailed a copy to the address that was on the ticket. Thank you, Mr. Cole. So, Ms. Allen violated my order. Uh, she didn't want to give an address to the court or to the <coughs> prosecution where they could have her served with an information. So I ordered that she report to the prosecutor's office the Friday after our last in-person hearing. You're telling me she didn't do that, but you mailed a copy of the information to her last known address? Yes, I had my paralegal do that, and I believe she's filed a certificate that she mailed it. She did file a certificate that she was rescinding it and sending it back to us. In the information, you've charged her with two counts of violating Utah law. First of all, section 5332171A, which is uh, all drivers have to have a license in their possession. As I look at the elements of that crime, it says the licensee shall have the license certificate in his immediate possession at, possession at all times when driving a motor vehicle. My best assessment of the evidence in this case is that Officer Hansen identified Ms. Allen as the person who was driving a vehicle on April 7th of 2022 when he stopped her for having an expired <coughs> registration. And pursuant to his testimony, she was unwilling or unable to provide a license pursuant to 5332171A. So I believe that the city has met its burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt that Ms. Allen is guilty of count number one, driving, uh, having no driver's license in her possession. The second count that was filed against Ms. Allen was for a violation of Utah Code 411A1303 which says that individuals who drive or move on any highway, any vehicle of any type required to be registered in this state that was not properly registered and for which a certificate of title has not been issued or applied for or for which the required fee has not been paid. Officer Hansen's testimony was that Ms. Allen was operating a vehicle that in his um, experience of three years should have been registered it was not registered. In fact, the registration had expired on September 21st, and Ms. Allen could not provide him with anything that corroborated that it was a mistake in the computer or the, or the stickers or some other kind of confusion. So I believe the city's proved beyond a reasonable doubt Ms. Allen's guilty of a violation of 411A1303, and I'm enter entering convictions for both counts in this case. Now, Mr. Cole. When I notified Ms. Allen about trials in absentia, I think I also, following my common practice, advised her that she can be sentenced if the same uh, conditions apply. That is, that she's not being held against her will and she's voluntarily absented herself from our, can, our proceedings. Do you want me to impose sentence today or do you want me to set a sentencing hearing and send her a notice. I would ask the court to impose sentence today. All right. Is there anything you want to tell me about this case before I sentence Ms. Allen? Judge, I just suggested the court impose the standard fee schedule fine for each of the infractions. And what do you understand the standard fees to be for each one of these violations? I think. I don't do know how many kibitz you. It's $50 per violation. That is my suggestion. But. Here's the sentence I'm going to impose. For count number one, no jail time because it's an infraction and a $50 fine. Now, if Miss Allen comes to court and shows the court a license that covered the time she was driving, then she won't owe the fine, but the conviction will stay in place. So I'm going to let her still use the defense to avoid the fine, Mr. Cole. That's fine, Judge. For count number two, no jail time, 
and a $50 fine. If she brings in proof that the car's been registered since this incident, then she could get the credit that we would normally give somebody. We can't give that credit. Did it? They have to have within two months. Within two months, okay. Then she'll have to then she'll have to pay the fifty dollars for that for that violation, whether she can bring proof or not. Mr. Cole, and any notice that we send to her should include her right to appeal, please. I don't know if we have that in the standard notices that we send, but in this case she'll need to be advised of that. Mr. Cole, anything else in this case? No, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, and we'll be in recess.